basically human but with different DNA. Is it okay to take their rights away and turn them into burgers? Um, <laughs> Why aren't you vegan? Because I enjoy meat. Do you think um, because we derive sensory pleasure from an action, it morally justifies the action? If a product has been ethically farmed, there is nothing wrong with eating that meat. Okay, well I guess that's where we uh, we uh, part ways. If it was you right now, I'm about to get shredded by a lion. I wouldn't go lions though, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you change your position now? You're, you're uh, off the reductio? I think I might change my position <laughs> okay. here. Yeah. Safe. <laughs> we won't edit that out. <laughs> Okay, so the science says, why aren't you vegan? I'm interested in debating the ethical principles of veganism with you. Are you a vegan? No. And do you have an opposition to the ethical principles of vegan veganism we can debate? I, I'm curious to see what your the basis of your ethical principles are. Okay. My position is something like, with a few caveats, uh, it's something like um, human beings should live without violating the negative rights of sentient animals. Yeah. Or sentient beings, really, because animal or not, you know. I'm not necessarily concerned with animals if they're not sentient. Um, that is my metric for moral value. We share that in common with animals and I believe because we share that property of sentience with animals, we should respect them enough not to enslave them, kill them, interfere with them, frustrate them, you know, and uh, use them for our own benefit, provided it violates their negative rights. Uh, so um, what sort of animals do you think have sentience? What do you think I mean by sentience? Uh, Self-aware, self-determinant. Nah. No. Sentience is able to have a subjective experience. Okay. Consciousness under the banner. I, if I say conscious and sentient, I am sort of have these under the same banner. So it can be able to feel or perceive things, but you need to be a subject as well, like a, having a subjective experience. In order to have your rights violated, you need to be an individual subject of this okay. experience as well. So, so you believe that cows, for example, can understand what they perceive rather than just experience them? Or, or sort of have an interpretation of what their experiences are beyond just the sensation. Is that what you'd say? Oh, well, I don't think they're just machines that no. don't uh, react, or not react because plants react, but respond to external uh, pain, fear, suffering, well-being. Of course, cows can have all these experiences, uh, emotional complexity, and uh, yeah, they definitely, what happens to cows matters to the cows, for sure. No, yeah, I think I'd agree. So on that basis, then you are vegan, for, we'll stick with the cows for now, I think, because that's quite a, a good basis. Um, do you think that cows shouldn't be kept in captivity on farms and then killed at the end of their, uh, well, when they're ready to be sorted then, on the basis that they are sentient? Yeah, that's an aspect of, of what I'm concerned with. Okay. Um, but I think animals can have their rights violated in other ways, not just in farms and not necessarily in captivity. Like I, I don't support hunting animals and, uh, using animals in entertainment, um, like, you know, uh, SeaWorld, for example. Um, so, yeah, so there are forms of animal exploitation I would be opposed to other than this. But, yeah, but basically the principle would be the same. It would be they, they have an inherent value based on their sentience. We shouldn't uh, violate their, their rights. Okay, I see. Um, so when we or propose we get rid of farms because we are vegan, what do you propose happens to the animals that once were farmed? Okay. I'm hearing a practical argument, more of a pragmatic sort of argument here. What would we do if animals had rights? Yes. So Is that a justification that for animals not to have rights? Is that I'm just trying to get. No, no, what? No, I'm curious as to see what what would happen to the animals once they're not okay. being farmed. Whether and that would lead to an improvement in their quality of okay. life. Of course, I want to talk about that. But first, do we agree cows should have rights? Because I, I want to talk, so the reason I'm saying this is because I want to debate the principle before we go off on is it achievable and what would happen if they did have rights? Would there be some issue with, well, you know what I mean? So if we, if you, otherwise we won't move off the principle point until we've come to a, yeah. you're still opposed to it and then we can debate it. Yeah. And then we can talk about what would happen to all the animals. Because yeah, yeah, I do have a yeah. good answer for this and okay. we can talk about that. Yeah. So yeah, so in principle, should cows have these rights I'm talking about? Um, I think they should have rights. I don't think they should be the same as human rights because I think humans and animals are different. They're separated. Okay, great. That's a good place for us to, to hit too. Mm. So when I talk about rights, I'm talking about negative rights. Uh, so uh, the right not to be enslaved and 
treated as property and murdered and not to have something done to them yes you know so when i'm talking and when humans have like all these positive rights and like the right to vote and all these things um but i'm talking about these rights Negative. not to be into yeah, yeah yeah you know yeah yeah because i only just learned these <laughs> concepts yeah, myself because I, I know what that means I, I used to call them fundamental rights okay yeah so basically not to be interfered with and things yeah. like this so um you were saying we don't think animals should have those because like cows, we can stick with cows because yeah. that's simple because it's different kinds of sea sponges, of course, which aren't sentient. Yeah, no. um, so you don't think cows should have a right to be protected from being interfered with, but humans should because we're different. Yes, I think so. So what is the morally relevant difference that justifies uh, robbing animals of their rights for a burger, so let's say like cows for their, their, their moral right to exist for a burger? And what's the difference between humans and animals that justifies it in that context and not in the human context? Oh, it's very interesting, actually. I have to think about this one for a second, yeah. yeah. So, um, so which is the point of this yeah. debate, so. Yeah, um, let's think about it. Yeah. Why is it okay for cows? Why shouldn't cows have rights, but humans should have these fundamental rights? Well, I think one thing that is uh, different is the human like capability of cognition uh, and being able to think and reason is something that separates us from animals. Okay. So we'll just put in our cognition. Yeah, we can uh, which to, uh, we'll, we'll call it cognition to a human degree, a, 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 an average human degree or something. So what about this cognition? Because obviously cows have cognition. Yes. Uh, but you believe that humans have co cognition that is far more complex than cows? Yes, I do. Okay. And do you have any other traits that separate us? So Because we can go through all the... Once you've got a list, we can go through them. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> um, well, I guess... Um, a difference between humans and animals is um, the formation of society, complex society. Uh, it's so complex society, because you know animals can form. Yeah, yes, they can. So um, they can have uh, small communities, but I think the, um, the structure and the different levels of a human society are far beyond what animals have. If, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course we have and, built and a very they're, they're structured on different principles to animal yeah. sort of hierarchies. Able to construct com complex civilization? And you said something like the structure of our civilization is different. For example, um, I'm, I'm no biologist, but um, I humans can form society off the principle. So, for example, democracy is uh, one system that humans have, and that isn't necessarily based solely on the principle of what is best for survival of the human species, uh, especially at the stage right now. So we're having this debate, um, and we could elect a leader based on the principle of veganism, whether animals should have the same rights as humans. Mm. Animals don't form their hierarchies based off that same principle. Their sole concern is always survival. We, have we operate under de to operate under democratic principles? I, I, I'd say so. It's an interesting one. So you've got um, cognition, high, co high level con cognition, yeah. you called it re reason, reason? Yeah, reason yeah. Um, able to construct complex civilization. Yes. And you've got operate under democratic principles. Yes. They're the differences that justify uh, killing cows for burgers and not human beings, meaning humans can have these fundamental rights protecting them and animals should not or don't, de don't, well, don't deserve them kind uh, of thing. I, I, I don't think that um, if humans stopped eating animals that, that, would be, that animals would stop getting killed for food. That's a different question. My, my question is, principally, should animals have rights? And you said, no, they should not, not like humans, not fundamental rights. Same like, rights as humans. Are. Yeah, but no, I'm only talking okay. about not, not the same rights. I'm talking about the same negative rights. Okay, sure. Not to be interfered with. And you said they shouldn't because there's something different about us. And now we're at the differences. Okay. And then you, you just kind of went off track. But I don't want to go, go yeah. off track too much. Yeah, yeah. But we can't because we can debate all those things. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm not avoiding them. I'm just trying no, to keep no, them no, focused yeah, on, no, on the difference. Okay. So the first one you said, um, high cognition. Yes. Okay. So this one here is actually quite easy to debunk because there are human beings who have these human rights, the rights I'd, I'd wish to extend to non-human animals yep. that don't have a high degree of cognition. Oh, yeah. Would you support taking their rights away? No, I wouldn't. And you can think of the communities I'm talking about? Yes. The human beings yeah, I'm talking I, about? I can think, I can a baby think. even. A baby even. Yeah. So until a baby reaches this high level of cognition, I can just violate their rights, yeah? However, this baby has the capability to reach that higher level of cognition yeah. that animals don't have. Animals, yeah. uh, no cool. animals... I can debunk that too, yeah. because okay. we, we just did bef prior to that. Because I said well, there are we, communities we of people, people that, don't, that aren't able to. They yeah. have a faculty dis 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 disability that they can't... Yeah. They might even have had an accident, a car accident, and they're, 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 they lost some type of brain capacity. I mean, they should still have human rights though, hey? Yeah, but they're, they're part of... They are humans... And, um, okay, now we're getting a different trait here. You know, this is a different trait. 
So they are part of the human species? Yeah. They're part of a species who has this higher cognition? Has this uh, capability to reach that high level of cognition, yeah. So even though they can't, like uh, uh, there are people who can never reach this uh, higher ability of cognition, because they're part of a species that, that can, yeah. they should have human rights, but animals shouldn't. Yes. Okay. We're going to have to tie all these. You think so? <laughs> you hope so. You see, yeah. <laughs> I can change. Okay, that's good. You're a good thought. So obviously these, these human beings that um, there are human beings who can't reach this high level of cognition and they're unable to construct complex civilizations. I mean, I'm not unable to com construct a complex civilization. And um, uh, there are human beings who can't operate under democratic principles as well. Yeah. The people that can't vote or even can, uh, there are people that we still protect with human rights who can't do any of these things. Yes. Because human rights are universal and based on inherent value. Yeah. They're not based on any of these things. Um, well, actually. Well, they're not. The Declaration of hum uh, Universal Human Rights, that was not based on any of this, no, this stuff. No. What was it based off of? Um, I, I'm not actually sure. Was it... Inherent value. Inherent value. Okay. Part of the human species is an interesting one because you could just say, I don't know, you could just say, well, it doesn't matter if they can't do any of these things. They're part of a human species, a species who can. Yeah? Yeah. Let's just change their DNA a little. Oh, yeah. So, hypothetically, we change this, this person who's this human being who doesn't have a high level of cognition, who's unable to construct a complex civilization, who doesn't have the capacity to operate under democratic principles, yeah? Yeah. And they're no longer part of the human species, but you, you, you wouldn't be able to tell, actually. They just have yeah, a different so, DNA. So they just So they, they have an uncanny resemblance to the human species then? We found out they actually didn't have a human DNA. Okay. But you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at them. Is it okay to take their rights away and turn them into burgers? I'm not... Sure, actually. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, they're not humans, so on principle, then they should be able to be farmed, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I would have to take that position. So, so let me just be clear on this. You would, you don't have to. I mean, if you want, to, if you, if you believe that's that's if that's your moral framework. So basically, this this uh, humanoid. Uh, you couldn't yeah. tell the difference. They, they basically look like a human being. They just have about the cognition of a cow. Okay. Um, they're, they're unable to do these things that you've listed. Um, we can take them, them humanoid, basically human, but with different DNA. They're not human, can, you know, by the scientific metric, but we can take them and we can do what we do to cows to them. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose so, because in, in this instance, they aren't a person it, under how I would view it. Human. A, a human. A human. A human. Okay. It's a legal. Oh, I suppose so. Yeah. A human. Yeah. Then. Okay. okay. Well, I guess that's where we, uh, we part ways. I mean, that's a, that's a reductio. I've got, uh, yeah. I suppose. You, know, you know, that's a reductio. Like it's, a, it's reduced, it's reduced your, yeah, 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 of course, um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if you, yeah, because we can kill billions of them then. And turn them into burgers, billions of human like, uh, yeah, well, no, we kill billions of cows, we kill billions of chickens, yes. we kill trillions of fish. Yeah, um, I, su I suppose in, in this case. So basically, yeah. you, you have no consistency with your application of uh, these moral concepts. It's just because they're human, though. Yeah, I, I, I would say so. Yeah. But um, with that, do you, do you think that there are universal moral principles then as your basis for? I mean, I, I think that we should extend these fundamental rights based on inherent value to those who share that property sentience with us. Yes, otherwise we create a massive contradict uh, contradiction. Oh. We're saying we expect this, but screw them. Well, they can't. They don't have a higher cognition, able to construct complex civilizations, operate under democratic principles, and not part of our human species. So we should be able to do what we want to them. I don't have that. I think okay. we should extend these. Otherwise, I just think we're huge moral hypocrites. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, if I if I concede this then, um, and concede that we should extend rights to sentient animals. Um, okay. Uh, and so you change your position now? You're, you're I, I think, off I the reductio? I, I think I might change my position <laughs> okay. here. Because um, I'm curious. Safe. <laughs> we won't edit that out. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, with the... Uh, so so we, we've stopped farming sentient animals. They've got equal rights. Um, or, or, or they've got animal okay. rights, fundamental, fundamental animal rights. rights. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, with the idea of veganism as a whole, 
would it be wrong to eat an egg that you find? Just an unfertilized egg? Because that... Not intrinsically, no. Sentient. No. Not intrinsically. So no. that wouldn't... So that, That's not why I'm against eating eggs, by the way. Why are you against eating eggs, then? Uh, because the industry entails uh, rights violations and egregious cruelty as well, a welfare issue as well, but mainly because it's an incredible rights violation. The, the animals are selectively bred in order to produce eggs. They're essentially egg-laying slaves, machines, um, cause an enormous strain on their bodies. They often die in sheds. Free range is no better. The male chicks are exterminated in gas chambers or um, uh, they're minced up alive in blenders uh, because they don't lay eggs actually. And the industry will, will gas all these birds, uh, over 90% gas these birds and uh, turn them into pet food or processed meat for human beings. So it's an egregious rights violation and a horrible welfare issue. And also uh, can uh, containing birds like this is bad for a bird flu and uh, zoonotic diseases as well. But um, yeah, but that's why I'm against eating eggs and also viewing eggs as food to begin with, like what you're doing, what about eating an egg, is where these factory farms began. Okay. So your principle for this aspect of veganism is not based on, it is based in the current situation of how animals are farmed. But if, for example, gathering eggs from the wild, so subsistence egg farming, I suppose, was how eggs were collected, the, the chickens weren't harmed in the process of you just going out. Have and their rights violent? Are they, where, are you, where are you going to get these wild... So you're, f you're foraging for wild chicken eggs in nature? Yeah, I suppose. So in nature, I think chickens only lay about, so about 10 to 15 eggs a year. Okay. So you're talking about taking their egg? Yes. I, I it's suppose. not like in, in, in farming situation, they've been selectively bred to lay 300. So in that situation, you probably are violating some kind of right of that, interest of that, of that bird. Um, but let's just say it's been left there and abandoned. Okay. You find an abandoned egg and you eat it in isolation and you don't promote it yeah. and, you, and, you, and, you, and you no longer view eggs as food but you're in some situation where you've got to eat it you know I mean yeah I mean I don't have an issue with that I don't think it's intrinsically wrong to do that let's just like if you found a piece of dog poo on the ground and you ate it uh, is, is an unfertilized egg any more than a waste product no it's actually a product but it, it doesn't it, what, what use would it go to if it's just left and it won't be fertilized like if it's a bit of dog shit on the ground and you walk up and eat it, like I don't, in, I don't think it's intrinsically oh, it's, wrong. Okay, so you can eat it, but it's it shouldn't be viewed as a food product. Is I, I your think that the, the reason that the animals are in this situation, like so, I mean, I would have a, I wouldn't have an issue with you eating dog poo because it's obviously not oh, yeah. a product. But yeah. what happens is if you really like the dog poo and all your friends find out about the dog poo, the dog poo and then you start farming, and which is a situation we're actually in. Yeah, yeah. This isn't a, yeah, yeah. this isn't a logical fallacy, a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah. This is a slippery slope that you can actually prove. This is what happened. Eggs became food. They selectively bred chickens. Now we have factory farms. So if you really like the dog poo that you just picked up randomly and it becomes a product, a resource, and we're enslaving dogs and doing what we're doing now, yeah. then yeah, I'd have a pretty bit of an um, issue with just viewing that product as food because it's mentality that led, led us there. I see. But less of an issue than an actual rights violation. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. See, I see how you're going about this. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. I think that's the rights violation primarily, like... If yeah, so, so the attitude of viewing animal products as food has led to... This, well, where this we are today. And then you, you fear that... There'd be a regression if we started doing. We're just basically going back to ground zero, essentially. Okay. But that is a secondary concern from the actual rights violation and animals having yeah. rights. You know yeah, I, mean? I see. I'd be less concerned with it. I'm not like a that's, that's, full on dogmatist. No, oh my no, god, no. like there's no situation. It's always inherently bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Do you have any? Uh, did you want to discuss? Because now you, I pushed you off of the mass murder of these. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Humanoid. <laughs> Poor humanoid people. I'm, I'm glad they don't exist. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad we, we pushed you off of that position, yeah. actually. But uh, can we uh, go to what would happen to all the... You, you, at first, you wanted to talk about what would happen to all the farm animals or yeah, yeah. if we what, released yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. What would happen? So, so these issues, right, yeah. of justice and like applying rights to sentient beings... Uh, they usually happen in stages and in, in different places yeah. around the world. First, they don't, it's not like oh, just yeah. what ubiquitous boom, of rights course. everywhere, yeah, yeah. you know. So it would happen in stages, and also the boycotts of people like yourself who may think it's unjustified to put into demand these products that violate animal rights and cause egregious yeah. suffering and killing. That would happen gradually too. Yeah. So there would be a gradual slowdown between demand and supply. So they would stop breeding animals because the animals are here because they yeah because they're in demand yeah and they bred they're bred yeah. they're artificially bred they're forcibly yeah, yeah. bred they're often raped they. have fist cows in the anus to hold their cervix and inject bull semen that they've yeah. got out of a bull with them. They, it's horrible. That's how they're breeding them. Yeah. That's why they exist, because of the demand. So as demand goes down, so does supply. And then uh, when animals have rights, by that time, there are probably not many animals being bred into existence because they'll do something like a phase out. Yeah. 
Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be a slowdown in the yeah, production. Yeah, the government won't go tomorrow. Stop. They'll have to say, yeah, oh, there'll yeah. be like a ten-year phase out of this industry. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, of course, wouldn't happen. And then with the animals that are left, we'd obviously have a bunch of people who believe in animal rights. Then because we'd probably have something, something like a different, a cultural shift, and we'd protect those animals. Okay. Yeah, I see. You can't re release them to the wild because they're not wild animals. No. We created them; they'd get eaten up by predators, which I wouldn't be in favor of. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But it, okay. So then. Those sentient animals that are wild that get eaten by other animals, do you think that's just the way of the world? Or do you think the rights of those animals getting <clears throat> preyed upon should be protected as well? Yes. Yes, as well. Okay. Think about the movie um, Alien. Let's just say they're an obligate carnivore and in a survival situation. Would we allow them to go and just eat a bunch of humans? I see. Yeah, that's... We would shoot them dead, wouldn't we? Is that not a violation of that? creatures no, there's competing rights here i mean if you okay, yeah. competing rights i yeah, suppose so basically you're allowed to defend yourself if you try to kill me so, out, so you uh, yeah. that prey have a, a greater right to survival than their predators because their predators are well, alive. think about it put it in the human context put it in the human context we shouldn't allow uh vicious uh monsters to come and eat us just because they are uh in a their predators natural predators and in a survival situation like so let's just say i've got yeah. a sanctuary right and i've got uh, we have animal rights okay. okay and i've got a sanctuary i'm protecting the the last of these sheep from yeah. the animal industry from, yeah yeah and there's uh, some wolves okay right and these wolves need to eat they're starving hungry yeah now they come into but essentially they have rights now these my sheep your sheep yeah but well, they're not my sheep they're they are well, sheep the, i mean guardianship of right. yeah. sheep have rights it's like children they have their yeah. own rights but anyway, these them. I'm protecting and giving them guardianship. Wolves come, they need to eat, okay. and they come in and try to shred my sheep alive. Okay. Not the, the sheep in my care alive. Yeah. Should I allow that to happen? If you think it's your if it, you think it's your duty to intervene, then yeah, you you shouldn't allow that to happen. If they were children, now I would protect them. Yes, you. Would. I wouldn't say, well, they're natural predators. What are you on about, dude? Yeah. Okay. So I wouldn't have a double standard there, like if it was humans. If it was you right now, I'm about to get shredded by a lion. I wouldn't go, lions though, bro. <laughs> yeah. Natural <laughs> uh, circle of life, bro. Yeah, I, I suppose so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, just, so, I'm asking for consistency. I know yeah, it sounds a bit crazy. Yeah, Should yeah. we go out into the wild and protect animals from predators? Well, I'm just like no, thinking about yeah. our contribution first. Um, it's a practical, it's a huge practical issue out there. It's crazy out there. Yeah. You know, I don't think just because something's natural, it means it's good. Do you think because something's natural, it's ethical or good? Um... No, I, I don't think nature can be a basis, or, or what we see is a basis for what is right. Yeah. But then I, I don't know what necessarily whether there is a basis for right at all, which I suppose is a different argument altogether. But um, well, I think maybe I, I think I, well, well, I, I think it, it's it's a fair judgment to say that there are there are rights rather than there aren't because if there aren't rights and you're wrong, if you say there aren't rights and you're wrong, then that's a lot worse than you say oh that that people should or beings should have rights and then you're wrong. Because if, if you if you still, I get that. Yeah, 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 I get so, you. So either, so like you say- oh, Hearing on a side of cautions. It, it, yeah, so it's um, Pascal's wager, but with rights, I suppose. I what you say, some people say, well, rights don't exist. They're a subjective construct, you know, but yeah. I, I do think they sh they have great utility. Yeah. And we should have them because I want okay. human rights and I think human rights should be universal and I do think we should extend them to animals and I think okay. we got you to that position. I think, is there anything else you want to quickly discuss? Uh, do you have any other? How, how do you feel about this discussion, by the way? I, I think it's been very interesting. Yeah. Productive? Very, very balanced, productive as well. Have I shifted you off any positions? Um, I think you've okay. definitely shaken my position. I think what I want to do now is probably go back, do a little bit of research and see, open my eyes a bit more. To Why aren't you vegan? Why aren't I vegan? Um, because I enjoy meat, I suppose. Okay. And I enjoy tasty food and meat can be very tasty. Do you think um, because we derive sensory pleasure from an action, it morally justifies the action? Um, not necessarily. I, I, I like to... Not necessarily? I, I, I like, no, so, no I, I think that sensory pleasure isn't a simple justification for this. I think, well, I, I previously uh, believed in ethical farming practices. And I, in, in, my, in my previous view, I, I thought that if a product has been ethically farmed, then there is nothing wrong with eating that meat. But I, I think now I'm going to go and probably do a, a lot more research into what basis I have for that opinion, if that makes sense. I get you. I get you. Ethical farming is an interesting one. We can, we can, yeah, we can debunk that in practice and in principle. Okay. So we've got, yeah, you know, it's ethical farming. What's that? Ethical slaughterhouses. What are they? What do you mean yeah. by that? But then in principle, we already we discussed the we principle. We discussed the principle of farming. Which is overarching. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. that's why previously. So yeah, it's quite more. I think it is productive just to discuss the principle because then we get to the rest of it, which yeah, is like. I suppose so yeah. Uh, so basically, what, what, do you think you have a moral justification not to be vegan right now? Um, 
Because you put into bar- demand this this thing that yeah yeah um, with I that's very interesting. I'm I'm not entirely sure. I think I've still got a few questions. So for example, with with your sheep that you're guarding. <laughs> we're we're in a vegan world now. We've got animal yeah, rights, yeah. and I'm guarding these sheep. So this is what's yeah. hinging on you yeah. not supporting the no, industry no, right now. I was just curious. Okay, um, okay. Once that sheep dies, you respect its body. Then is that part of its negative rights to leave the body of the sheep? I to... honestly don't think that's part of negative rights. I think it's part really? of dignity. And I, I okay. uh, and now that we we recognise as, uh, them as having inherent value, I think we should be treat their body with dignity and, oh, yeah. and put them right. in burial because they would have a name and they would be they would have personhood. They'd yeah. be respected because then eating the animals leads to pr- uh, demand of animals and viewing as them well. as products. As These well. we're back at ground zero. Yeah. In, in that case, there's probably not very much, as far as I can see in this right now, much justification for not being vegan. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So I think you. Uh, I think maybe it would be a good thing to look up how to be vegan and yeah. uh, make, making sure that you're uh, having a healthy whole foods plant based diet. And I think you should supplement with B12, of course, because uh, yeah, it's a it's a nutrient of concern. So I mean, there's plenty of resources online. Oh yeah, well, hundred percent. There so. is so many, dude. Like, and it's very easy. And you, there's a you, there's an array of vegan options. So, but if it is a little inconvenient at first, you have to weigh up that that small amount of inconvenience with for, d- decapitating animals yeah. for this oh, yeah. for pleasure, basically, because you like the taste. In the same way of inaction against egregious human rights violations. I wouldn't simply slowly wind my way down. I'd, Expect, I'd, I'd like to think I'd... Analogi- like, analogize it with human beings and yeah. it's easy to make these moral decisions. And it's a very, that's a cheap, you, you'll know more than a lot of people who have been vegan for a long time if you apply that principle. Okay. You'll actually be able to navigate these discussions a lot. You'll be able to debunk a lot of people if you just put humans in place of the animals. But but what we did here is we trade equalized yeah, the human beings leveled them out. Yeah, we leveled them out a little, a little bit so that it made it, you know, because obviously there are certain things that if we're more sentient than a certain being, then obviously we should have more of a consideration if it's one or the other, but not for taste pleasure and things like this. You know what I mean? So there are th- different ways to justify it, but I think like you have great principles to go off of now. Yeah, and, uh, no, it's, yeah, no. Well, thank you very much. I think that was productive. <laughs> no worries, brother. very much. What's Enjoy uh, classics. Yes, I shall. <laughs> uh, you should look up to Pythagoras. Pythagoras, yes. Um, he was one of the first animal rights activists, yes. and he even inspired... He, the guy that was afraid of beans. I don't know. If, if, I, if I remember... He's I, afraid of beans? Yeah, I think that's why he died, because he didn't want to touch any beans, and he was getting chased down. But that might be someone else. Yeah, he was getting chased down by some um, people trying to kill him, and his, his religious cult, for whatever reason, were very opposed to beans. And he came up to bean fields. Maybe human beans. Human beans, maybe, maybe. Sentient beans. <laughs> he thought they were sentient beans. Yeah, uh, he thought they were out to get him. But um, yeah, no. But he inspired uh, William Shakespeare, actually. Oh, did he? To be uh, against the uh, killing of animals. And he, William Shakespeare has a poem, a poem about uh, the dairy industry and why it's bad. Okay. Well, I'll probably have a look so at that. Animal rights stems pretty far back into... Yeah, I can imagine, actually, yeah. I mean, to be fair, you look at... Um, da Vinci? I don't know. Another animal rights actor. Oh, was he? Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah, well, it's it very interesting as well seeing, because with classics, there's a very different attitude to um, animals back then because you've got animal sacrifice and things like that. So it, it's interesting to see, I suppose, a development from sort of almost gratuitous killing yeah. of animals to now what some people would view as uh, a killing of animals for utility to actually, it's there's no utility in killing them at all. I think it's gotten way worse for animals and it's gotten better. Yeah. I've been an activist You're for a long right, time. Actually, yeah. it's, way, it's way worse. It's way out of control. It's, as a result of industrialization. There are more gas chambers now than there have ever been in history. Okay. For pigs. I see. There are more, there are more slaughter factories now than there have ever been in history. There are more torture facilities, farms, factories, prisons now than has ever been in history. There are more sea animals being tortured and murdered than has ever been in history. We've, we've regressed. Yeah. Right now is the dark ages for animals. Okay. And we're, and we're all oblivious to it. Because it's happening right now behind our, you know, behind marketing and labeling and all these things, you know. Yeah. Okay. No. But I don't want to put you in a <laughs> dystopia. But once no, you, once no, you, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. especially with um, what, what we've discussed now. Yeah, I, I see. Once you open up, I, once I you open up Pandora's box, you want yeah. vehement about your position. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well. Um, on again, you, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that chat with Hugo. I was doing a live stream after I was driving back from Cambridge. And Hugo actually uh, left a message saying, enjoyed our conversation earlier. I might just have to change my ways. So there you go. Bit of a bit of a happy ending with Hugo there. A very intellectually honest guy. And he bit the bullet 
and then changed his position when he realized that maybe he doesn't want to hold a moral framework that's so inconsistent. So I really do respect intellectual honesty and someone who's able to change their position after realizing that the position has uh, not so ethical conclusions. So good talking to you, Hugo, and I'll see you all in the next debate.